This video is an introductory video to show the basics of operating our front of house sound system here in our sanctuary. Okay, we have this um, auxiliary cabinet to the right of the soundboard here. And um, use the same key to unlock it as you do the padlock on the roll top part of the soundboard desk. And if you see the shelf one up from the bottom where the computer is, is where the uh, charger and the cordless mic is stored. So here we have the um, charger and the mic. Cordless mic, it's already uh, got a set of batteries in it. So it's just a matter of just turning it on here. Have to hold it in a couple seconds, hold it in a couple seconds, turn it off. So the cordless mic is there and ready to go. There's an extra set of batteries over here charging that can be used um, for the following week. Key thing to remember with the sound system here is when you're first powering on, you do want to turn the Eurodesk power supply on first, then the distribution amplifier that's right above it has that red square to the right. And then once this board is powered up, you'll go back into the back room behind the grand piano where there's a rack with three amps and there's a surge strip under it that you just turn that on and all the amps cut on at the same time. You want those amps to be the last thing you cut on. You even want to turn on any instruments, keyboards, um, wireless mics. You want to turn all that equipment on and um, then turn the amps on last. And then when you're done, you want to go back to that back room and you want to turn the amps on, off. Turn those amps off first and then come back over here to the board and turn off that distribution amplifier and then the Eurodesk power supply. Um, you want to turn that one off. Turn that off last. And so that would take care of the powering on and powering off. Now it comes to adjusting the soundboard, you should not have to really adjust anything other than the particular slider that you're going to be using uh, for like say a pulpit mic over here, turning that up. And um, all these knobs, the green knobs and the yellow knobs, they should pretty much stay where they are. The only thing you would really adjust is if a particular instrument that's plugged in or mic that's plugged in, if somebody wanted to be able to hear that vocal mic or that keyboard, or if you had the laptop iPod uh, cord plugged in, which is on uh, channels 25 and 26. If you were doing that and somebody um, wanted to hear on that particular device, mic, instrument, MP3 player, or laptop, they wanted to be able to hear that audio not only on the house, which, you know, like on this wireless mic, you would just turn up that channel fader and that would give you the house for that mic. But if somebody in the monitors, if somebody wanted to hear in monitor seven and monitor eight or monitor number two over by the keyboard, wanted to hear that mic in those monitors, you would have to adjust those. Normally you adjust them up to about maybe 11 o'clock. And that's the only adjustments on these green auxiliary knobs. It'd be two, seven, and eight, which seven and eight are the last two at the bottom. The only other, uh, besides the different fader controls would be over here 
would be to just turn up the main master controls. And again, just basically even the tops of these faders to that bold line where the zero is. So just bring that up there. If we do like a little overhead shot there, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how they're right at the top of that line. And that's where pretty much all the faders will be. Just kind of the very tops of them right up there. Okay, the next uh, thing that we have is this rack that's in the front pew. It'll be again to your left near the grand piano side of the sanctuary. In this front pew next to the column, there's a rack and it has the two wireless receivers for the, uh, this one is for the handheld microphone. If you ever have a problem with it not functioning after it's powered on, if you look right here when on the handheld wireless mic, when you take the bottom, unscrew the bottom part to put the batteries in, if for any reason uh, the, it is not working, after you've powered this unit on, you can hit this button right here. It says sync. And then when the cover is off the bottom of that handheld microphone with the batteries in it and it's turned on, you can hold the bottom of the mic towards this little uh, sync window right here. It's like a little infrared, like a remote would be for your TV. And when you hit that button and hold, the base of the microphone towards it. It has a little sensor that reads it and it goes back and forth between the receiver and the mic and will sync the mic to the signal if for some reason it ever loses that. It rarely happens, but just in case, you know, it's good information to know if the mic for some reason is not working. Okay, right, well, when we go back down here to the bottom of the rack, you'll see down here in the bottom is a surge strip. You just basically need to reach over here and turn the surge strip on. Once that surge strip is on, you'll see both of these units will be powered up. That's showing the uh, channel frequency that's on, 89 for the handheld. And then you'll just see the green light over here on this uh, unit for the clip-on lapel mic. And that's pretty much all you have to do with those other than actually turning the mics themselves on. Okay, well what we have here now is the rack in the back change room. This is the change room behind the grand piano. And in this rack we have all the amps for our main house and for our stage monitor wedges. And so what I've done is I have it where now all three amps, they have switches on the fronts of them. Um, if you look here, they have switches here on the front but they're all in the on position now. And you just need to come down here. There's a surge strip down here at the bottom. You basically just need to flip this on and that'll turn all power to all three units at the same time. Uh, the very, if you look on the fronts there, you'll see the blue light uh, lit up on all of them. So make sure that blue light for the power is on. Okay, and just another note um, before we finish up here. Of course, we were showing you turning the mixing board on first, and then coming back here to turn these amps on. At the end of the day, when you're done using the sound system, you need to come back to this rack, and you need to turn these amps off first. So you need to come over here, and you need to flip this switch back off, and turn all of these off first. Then go back to the mixing board and turn the mixing board off and any self-amplified monitors need to be turned off first as well. The last thing that you'll turn off will be the soundboard and the two rack mount units that are part of that. Um, because otherwise you'll get a pop in all the speakers and it can damage the speakers, it could even damage the amps. So soundboard comes on first, last thing you turn on is your amps. When you're done, turn all your amps off first and turn the soundboard off last. And that's all there is to it.